All right, if you're using Google Sheets, sometimes you want to bring in values from other worksheets. So in this case, we want to bring in values into this summary tab that says all locations and we want to bring them from some of these source worksheets. So we're going to go over how to do that right now and some of the different nuances that you run into as you work through it. So these are basically just more complicated cell references. So your basic cell reference, we'll just put a number in I6 here. If we wanted to bring that into F6, you just hit the equal sign and this little gray bracket underneath here is saying it's waiting for data, so it doesn't have a whole formula yet. And you can just left click on I6. Hit enter, there it is. You bring the value from I6 into F6. Now, in order to get that value from another worksheet, we're just going to add a little bit extra. So we'll delete these. And the value that I want, New York, January 2019, is actually in the New York Q1 worksheet. But we'll talk about this a little bit later. It's summarized into New York 2019. So I actually want to grab it from NY 2019. So we call these worksheets or sheets or tabs. So all three of those terms will be the same thing. Worksheets is an older term from Excel. Tabs is just kind of an informal term that you might use because you're used to talking about browser tabs. And if in the actual documentation, they're usually referred to as sheets. So I'll try to call it a sheet. So we'll hit the equal sign. And now we want something from the NY 2019 sheet. First, we'll do it the easy way. And this is the way I would usually do it is after I hit equals, I go to this sheet and here's the value that I want. It's in F5 over here. If I left click on it, it's already showing you what's going to end up in that other sheet. Okay, so this rectangle here is a preview of what you're building and Google Sheets brings it over and lays it on top of this sheet so that you can see what you're doing, especially if you're doing a longer formula. And what it did was it uses the name of the worksheet, NY space 2019, and it surrounds it by single quotes. Now those single quotes are optional if there is no space, but in this case there is a space so they have to be there. So if you're not sure, just always put them in. And then the separator between the worksheet name and the cell reference is an explanation point. So you have to type that in and then the cell reference, which you don't have to type it in if you just use a mouse like I did. So let's hit enter and we brought that value into the cell. That's a 17, we'll go back and look. This was a 17. All right, so in practical applications, you probably don't want just one. In this case, we want these three, and then we'll pull these. Let's get rid of this pivot, pivot table editor. And then uh, the ones from over here. So these first three, we can behave like we would normally with simple cell references. So let's go down the 17 we can just drag this down. So if I go into the lower right hand corner of this rectangle, you see that there's a blue square. If you hover over that, you get a plus. As with simple cell references, you can just left click, drag it down. I'm going to go one too far. And it's smart enough to increment it, okay? But it will just go straight down. So this 68 is not what you want. That's a total, right? You wanna to jump to F13. So we'll go back here and we'll try to build this from scratch with the keyboard. I'm going to do a single quote and it is guessing some of this New York 2019, but we want to do F15 instead of F8. So we'll say, Hey, thanks for what you've given me here. We'll take it, but then we'll come back in and type the F15. All right. So we can drag those three down. Did I not get the right one? We wanted F13. Drag that down three. All right, and we're moving along. All right, now that you've brought these values into the cell, you can sum them. Let's do that. Yeah, but this is kind of the long way to do this. So I got 285. Let's check to make sure that's right. I'm going to hold down my control key and highlight 68, 70, 73, and 74. Look in the bottom right-hand corner. 
it's 285. So we know our sum formula is working, but you don't have to bring all of these values into this worksheet in order to then just do a sum on them. So you could just uh, build a longer formula, but and before I build this formula, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this window, I'm going to put it on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to uh, open up a new tab in my browser, put it over on the right, I lost it, where'd it go? There it is, put it over to the right. I will take this website address, I'll paste it into this browser. So I have the same worksheet up twice and because I want to see these cell ranges here. All right, so instead of pulling all the numbers in to put them into a formula, maybe that's what you want to do and that's fine, but if you don't want to pull them all in, you can just build a formula and use these cell references inside of it. So I want to sum, the first value is New York 2019. We'll use the separator, the explanation point, and then we want F5 to F7. Right, and then separate the values by a comma. So now we want to do New York 2019, 15. All right, you get the same value. So for the next column, this was New York. Uh, now we're going to do LA. We'll take a look at that sheet and you'll see it's the exact same layout with the same cell references, but just a different worksheet name. If you had a lot of these columns, let's say you were, had a little bit more foresight and when you wrote these formulas, you fixed the column reference. So when we copy this to the right, we want that to stay as an F. We'll do that for all of these. So what that dollar sign is going to accomplish is when you copy this to the right, the F won't change and the five won't change anyway because we're not going to drag it down. So let's highlight all of these we're going to drag them over to the right. And they're the exact same formula now because we fixed the column reference. So we will highlight all of them. And the only thing we really want to change is the name of the worksheet, right? So we're going to go to Edit, Find and Replace. We want to find New York space. Well, really, we just want to find New York. Let's try that. New York, change it to LA. Replace all. And it didn't do anything, but we need to click that we also want to search within formulas. So we'll click that. And it did something interesting and changed it from values to formulas, just so you could see what you're doing. Let's say replace all. There it goes to LA. We'll click done. Switches it back in the values. Now we're pulling in LA. So we'll prove that out. We'll go to LA. I'll hold down my control key. Scroll to the right so I can see everything. 59, 79, 76, 72. That total is 286. And let's sum this and see what we get. There we go. That's working. Now there are some faster ways to pull in this data. So I had used this file for another video quite a while ago. And what I had done here was create pivot tables from a different worksheet. So if I left click into one of these, we'll just maximize this for now. Zoom in. Each one of these pivot tables is made from a different worksheet, but it's done in the exact same way. So when I click into one of them and I look at the source, which is this top row, and you hover over it says select data range, the data range just has a worksheet name before it, right? And single quotes, explanation point, and then the cells. So you'll see this throughout as you work with worksheets more that other worksheets are referenced and sometimes it's built in and you don't even know how it's being done. All right, we're going to step down a level here and work with these, these tabs a little bit. Call them tabs, we call them sheets, worksheets, whatever. New York Q1, this has a lot of data, right? So the New York 2019 was more of a summary tab. This is more of the actual transactions. So there's 36 rows here. And let's go back to all locations and say we want to pull in, let's just say we want to pull in all of that data. All right, so there's a few different ways to do it. Let's just go down to some empty space. 
So we'll say a cool function called sort. So this returns an array, meaning that it will write out a, all the data to uh, below it and to the right of it, not just in this one cell. Sort, and then the range is going to be, here we go, single quote, Q1, explanation point for the separator, and then we'll say A1 to C36. All right, and so wants to know what column to sort it on. We'll do, we'll say column one. That's where the dates were. It is ascending or not, we'll just say true. To make it in ascending order and hit enter. It looks like the headers disappeared, but if you go down to the bottom, it sorted those headers uh, because it is it and put them on the bottom. What you could do is just make the range start in A2 and then copy and paste the headers in. That way it won't sort them like it's part of the table. All right, so that's a fast way to bring the data in. And if you did that and you came down to the bottom here and repeated the sort function, you could put all the worksheets together in a long row. So this process can be a little bit manual. It's not too bad, but if you're looking for a more automatic way to do it, and check out this next video that I've linked to. But most of all, uh, thanks for watching. It's nice to have you along. I'll see you in that next video.